we're going to progress from our kinematics discussion to start talking about kinetics. So kinetics is the analysis of the forces or reactions that cause emotion. And we're going to begin our discussion of kinetics by talking about Newton's law, which is force equals mass times the acceleration. So we can also write this out to look like the sum of the forces equals what's called our resultant force, FR, equals mass times acceleration. And let's review a few cases of acceleration. So when acceleration equals zero, the sum of the forces is going to be equal to zero. And this is just a statics problem. So nothing is moving. So mass times zero equals zero. And also, we're going to have zero acceleration when our velocity equals a constant. And that makes sense. If we're moving along a straight line, we're going to have a constant V with no acceleration, which is really just rectilinear motion, which we've covered. And then we'll have a case of a constant acceleration. So when A equals a constant, that's going to allow us to use this equation. So So this equation here, this is going to come in handy when we are looking at these kinetic problems and just in general. And the last thing about kinetics that's also important is that when we write F equals MA, we're going to be thinking about these problems in an inertial frame of reference, meaning that our object is fixed in space. So we can use two types of diagrams to express these kinetic problems. So free body diagrams and kinetic diagrams. And starting these off are really important first steps to solving your problems. And this is something you'll probably be graded on um, because if you don't get this set up right, you're going to have trouble as you go through the problem. So our free body diagram is going to look something like this. You're going to have a bunch of forces coming in onto the particle. And you're going to have a resultant force that is going to come out like so. So the sum of the forces is going to be our resultant force. And on our kinetic diagram, you're going to see our mass and an acceleration. And you could say these two represent the left and the right hand side of Newton's equation. On the left, we have all of our forces, and on the right, we have our mass and our acceleration. You can note here that our acceleration is in the same direction as our resultant force, but it's not going to be scaled the same. We're going to have our mass here as a scaling factor, so our acceleration will be pointed in the same direction, but not the same length. So in solving these Newton law problems, our first step is really going to be to choose our coordinate system. So it could be polar, normal and tangential, or Cartesian. And the next step is going to be immediately start drawing our free body and kinetic diagrams. Then we're just going to write out Newton's law, F equals MA, and we're just going to solve for our variables, whatever the problem is asking for. And we may need to utilize kinematics if we have too many unknowns to solve. But we can look at an example 
we'll clear some of this. So let's say that we have, here's our ground, and let's say we have a box that is gonna be pulled by a force P, and we're gonna have some surface tension that we're gonna denote with this Greek variable mu. So when you're starting out, you might draw your free body diagrams in one of two ways. So I encourage you here, if you want to pause the video and try to draw a free body diagram for this, uh, to do so now. Otherwise, we're just going to go ahead and solve. So you might look at this and you might, you know, start drawing. You know, we have our weight. friction, or you might look at this problem and draw your free body diagram like so. Now on the left, for a particle, this way is fine because we're not going to be assuming any shape to the object. So if you want to draw all your forces pointing in or out from the very center, that's okay. However, when we start getting into plain rigid bodies, which do have a shape, we're going to be looking for a free body diagram more like what is on the right, showing the actual positions of the forces. So it might be good to start getting into the habit of using this method here. So good for all types of problems. And this side, we have good for particles only. Now let's talk about coordinate systems for Newton's law problems. So in our Cartesian coordinate system, we can write our equation of motion as, of course, the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. So we can say, the sum of the forces in the x direction plus the sum of the forces in the y direction are going to equal mass, which is a constant, times our acceleration in the x direction plus our acceleration in the y direction. Or in scalar form, we can say sum of the forces in the x equals mass times our acceleration in the x direction. And we can also say the sum of the forces in the y direction equal our mass times our acceleration in the y direction. So for normal and tangential, we can say sum of the forces are going to be equal to mass times acceleration. Again, we can say that, of course, for each types of these systems. So we can write sum of the forces in the n direction plus the sum of the forces in our t direction equals the mass times our acceleration in the n, mu n, plus acceleration in the t direction. Or again, we can say in the n, sum of the forces in the n direction equal the mass times a n. And from what we know about normal and tangential, we know our normal acceleration is going to be equal to p squared over rho. So in our tangential, we can say some of the forces in the tangential direction equal the mass times our at, which equals our mass times v dot. And again, v dot is just the rate of change of speed. 
And lastly, for polar coordinates, we'll say our sum forces in the R plus forces in the theta equal mass times acceleration in the R plus acceleration in the theta. So for our R component, we can say sum of the forces for R equal mass times acceleration in the R which equals mass times r double dot minus r theta dot squared. And for theta, we can say sum of the forces in the theta direction equals the mass times acceleration in our theta component equals mass times 2 r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot. So I'll link down below if you want to see, you know, how we got these normal tangential and Cartesian um, formulas. Uh, but this is essentially the set of equations that we're going to use for Newton's law problems. So this is how we break it down and we use free body diagrams and kinetic diagrams to start our problem to really study and get a picture of what's going on. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps support my channel and helps me continue making videos for you guys. I'll see you next time.